Many of you have probably come across Ray-Ban and Oakley sunglasses. But what you might not know is that Luxottica, an Italian eyewear conglomerate, owns these brands. If we take a look at Luxottica's website, we can see that they own around 30 proprietary and licensed brands. In 2018, their worldwide production of frames reached 87 million units and they generated around 9 billion euros in revenue. Around 69% of total revenue came from its proprietary brands, and Ray-Ban and Oakley accounted for around 37% of total revenue. Luxottica started its operation on the wholesale side until it decided to move across the value chain by acquiring the United States Shoe Corporation in 1995 which owned Lens Crafters, one of the biggest retailers of prescription glasses. The acquisition gave Luxottica the power to push its own products to the front line. In 1999, Luxottica bought the optical division of Vauch & Lohm for $640 million, which included the brand Ray-Ban. Nowadays, people know Ray-Ban for its high-end line of sunglasses, but in the late 1990s, the brand was failing and was selling for less than $20 in gas station and convenience stores. Luxottica did an incredible job of turning around the Ray-Ban brand. Since the year 2000, Luxottica went on an aggressive shopping spree to strengthen its retail business. It acquired Sunglass Hut in 2001 for $462 million to increase its presence in the U.S. In 2004, it acquired Coal National Corporation, which gave it access to Pearl Vision, Target Optical, and Sears Optical. You know how there's a McDonald inside Walmart stores? Target and Sears Optical stores use the same concept. But instead of eating burgers in Target or Sears, you will probably walk out with a pair of overpriced sunglasses. But after Sears filed for bankruptcy, Sears Optical sees its business activities. Luxottica then went on to acquire Oakley for $2.1 billion in 2007. Thing is, it had a rough history with Oakley. In 1996, Oakley was disputing the high prices set by Luxottica. But Luxottica knew it was a big player and had tremendous pricing power. It stopped carrying Oakley's brands in its shops, which resulted in Oakley's stock price dropping by 33%. To break into the Australian and New Zealand market, it bought the OPSM Group in 2003, which owns OPSM, Lobman and & Pank, and budget eyewear brands. Luxottica made its moves in the Asian market as well. It built its Chinese presence in 2005, when it acquired two Chinese optical retailers, Ming Long Optical and Shui Liang Optical. Then, to enter in the Singaporean and Japanese markets, it acquired Spectacle Hut and Fukui Megane in 2018. To build a presence in Latin America, Luxottica completed the acquisition of Opticas GMO in 2011, Technol Brazil in 2012, and Optica Carol in 2017. Luxottica also pioneered the branded eyewear category by partnering with many fashion brands. Luxottica has multi-year exclusive license agreements in place with them. Prada, Versace, Giorgio Armani, Dolce & Gabbana, you name it. Most of the fashion brands have jumped on the bandwagon. But that begs the question. If all of these brands source their eyewear products from Luxottica, then why are there huge price differences between these brands themselves? There's only so much you can put in the sunglasses. It's not as if the thousand dollar sunglass are made of moon dust. But the brands do not really care as long as they fill their pockets. You see, Luxottica has to pay them a royalty of 5 to 14 percent in addition to a marketing contribution of 5-12% to of net sales, Luxottica did not leave any stones unturned. In an attempt to conquer the digital eyewear buying experience, 
It acquired Glasses.com from WellPoint in 2014, which allows customers to try on glasses via their virtual try-on technology. Luxottica also forayed into wearable technologies by partnering with Google in 2014 for the Google Glass project. In addition to everything else, Luxottica operates in the insurance space through IMED, the second largest vision benefits company in the US that serves over 52 million customers. Let's think about this. If you are insured by IMED, you will most likely buy a Luxottica brand that's covered by the insurance. Luxottica seems to operate the insurance arm to maintain its market share by reimbursing only its branded glasses. As if Luxottica was not big enough, it announced a merger with Essilor in 2017. The combined company Essilor Luxottica controls about 25% of the market. The two closest competitors, Safilo and Johnson & Johnson, are far behind. But it seems that the acquisition spree is not over yet. In 2019, Essilor Luxottica acquired Grand Vision, a global leader in the optical retailing space. All of these acquisitions resulted in Essilor Luxottica owning over 16,000 retail stores. And these are pretty impressive numbers. To put that into perspective, Walmart has around 11,500 stores worldwide. Luxottica's growth by acquisition strategy helped build its vertically integrated business model. The conglomerate covers the entire spectrum of the value chain, from product design to distribution, which essentially allows it to be a price maker. Two former executives of Lens Crafter claim that markups on Luxottica's eyewear could go up to 1,000%. Competitor Warbeak Parker took a stab at offering cheaper frames. They designed their frames in-house and worked directly with frame suppliers to lower the cost of production. They then pass on the cost savings to customers. But at this point, Essilor Luxottica could end up acquiring Warbeak Parker as well. What do you think of the prices of your glasses? Do you use any of Essilor Luxottica's brands? Have you switched to cheaper alternatives like Warby Parker? Let us know.